How, how do you, what is your, how do you process that? Secure. Secure, okay. Seamless. Seamless, interesting. Honesty. Honesty. Faith. Faith. Reliable. Reliable. Integrity. Integrity. Now think about just the words that have been used so far. They're quite diverse, aren't they? Um, and trust is one of these concepts that is a, it's a big word, right? Sort of like love. I mean, what does it mean in, in, in concrete terms? How do you define it? How do you operationalize it? And by the way, this is one of the reasons why trust is an issue today is that a lot of us have lots of different ways of thinking about what trust is. Um, I define trust as confident reliance on a person, group, or company Company, when there is the possibility, uh, when you're vulnerable, when there's risk involved. Right? So when you're in a risky situation and there's the potential of loss, you all, you all understand loss, right? Uh, then you, you, you question, how can I trust this person? Right? And if you decide that they're not trustworthy, i.e. you make a decision to, to be suspicious or, or to distrust, you're less comfortable. You're more vigilant. You're more protective. So if you think about it, trust is, uh, is really a, an aspect of social capital. It's an aspect of a relationship that fundamentally affects how we orient ourselves to other people. Right? When we are suspicious of someone, we close up. We, it may exchange with them, but very carefully. When we trust, we exchange very freely. Okay. Now, uh, I just want to step back and just talk a little bit about what's happened to trust over the past 40 years. Um, and interestingly, trust is something that social scientists have measured for a long period of time, really since going back since the, the 1960s. And one of the things that we, they've measured is trust in media. Uh, in the 1960s, about the mid-60s, trust in media, when, when you, people surveyed um, people and asked, do you trust the media? About 30% of people said, yeah, I trust the media. In 2010, where do you think we are on that? The low car salesman. <laughs> we're, we're at about 15% of people who say, yeah, I trust the media. Right? So it's declined by about half. How about the United States Congress? In, 19, in the, the mid-60s, when people were asked, do you trust Congress, about 60% of people actually said, sorry, 40% of people said, yeah, I trust Congress. Where do you think we are now? 15, 16. We're actually about 10%, pretty close. Um, now, social scientists also ask uh, what's called generalized trust questions. They say, in general, do you think most people can be trusted? In the mid-60s, when they asked people that question, about 60% of people said, yeah. I think most people can be trusted. Today, that number is about 30%. Now, what about business? In the mid-60s, when people were asked, can you trust business, about 55% of people said, yeah, we can trust business. Where do you think we are today in terms of trust in business? Half that? 15%. Devastating decline. After the global financial crisis, there was about a 20 percentage point decline in trust. And that was particularly severe with insurance companies and banks. Not surprising. <coughs> so you could make a pretty good argument that we have a crisis of trust today. By the way, what makes that a little more alarming is that when you look at the data on trust among younger people, they're about 15 percentage points lower on trust than the next generation. Right? So when you ask people 25 to 35 in that range, Right? Compare that to 35 to 65, it's about a 15 percentage point reduction. So the younger people coming into the workforce are even less trusted. Right? Now, so we have a problem in trust. Um, but let's, let's think about what, what the consequences of that are, because that's really important. Right? You've got to be motivated to build trust. And the only way you get motivated to build trust is if you understand how valuable it is. We have a lot of social science that tells us that um, trust is absolutely related to employee retention. When you have high trust, you have, you have much greater employee retention. When you have low trust, 
there's much more defection among employees. Uh, but that's not all. If you think about this idea of trust for a minute, trust is directly connected to cooperativeness. Right? You cooperate with people you trust. When you don't trust, you don't cooperate as much, right? This idea of you, you sort of, you may have a relationship, but it's a careful relationship. It's not an open relationship. So if you look at company performance, high trust companies have more cooperativeness inside them, and they have more collaboration. And so one group within the company partners in a productive way with another group, and so they're more productive and more profitable. So if you think about a low trust organization, right, and the good employees are leaving the organization and the ones that stay aren't really collaborating with each other. So you have a broken economic system because the social capital within that organization is broken. Right? Now everything I just told you has been empirically proven. It's not, you know, it's not a question, right? So trust is incredibly valuable. Now, um, by the way, wh why do you think, if you were to sort of reflect on why trust is so low today,